Everybody, it's the last raider. We are back again with another video, and people were people were talking about this on Twitter, and I got to looking into it, and I thought, wow, uh, we need to do a video on this one. Also, compliment me on the sound of the video. Can y'all hear me a lot clearer? And do you like that? Because I'm using a new microphone. Anyway, while releasing the Justice League Snyder Cut sets a dangerous president, written by Drew Taylor. Mm, boy, this is gonna be fun. What happened? Zack Snyder's cut of his failed superhero team-up movie, Justice League, will see a release on Warner Media's direct-to-consumer streaming platform, HBO Max, sometime in 2021. Members of the movement who have been hectoring, I think you meant to say heckling, war, hecker, he, heckling Warner Brothers, to release this version of the movie, see it as a giant win. Everyone else should be worried about what this means for the rest of cinema. Um, I'm not. Because, uh, depending on what this is going to turn out to be, this could be either uh, a really a gigantic flop that could kill the DC Cinema Universe until someone reboots it as a different platform, as a different uh, version or it could end up solidifying and making the DC Cinema Universe. Either way, HBO is going to either way HBO and Warner Brothers are going to get a shit ton of money out of this. Because there's so much so many people want to see this. They want to see this Snyder cut and it's it's just basically a director's cut. It's what the director wanted to originally take in there but producer didn't want to spend the money on, you know, a movie. I think it was like 4 hours long. Is the Snyder cut supposed to be? And they wanted to half. They want to get it down under two hours. And I'm sorry if you've got a if you've got a vision that's over four hours long. There's no way you can make enough cuts, in my opinion. So I think the Snyder cut's going to be superior. And uh, it's terrifying these people because uh, let's explain something. Collider is one of those SJW sites that they want to tell you what to think. They don't want to tell you what's good entertainment. Anyway, going on. The saga of Snyder's Justice League starts long before the internet began crying out for the Snyder Cut. The production of the movie was fraught, and Warner Brothers started second-guessing their decision to go all-in on Snyder once Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice became a commercial disappointment and a critical disaster. Well, it was a critical disaster for a couple reasons. One, Batman was not true to character. You got Batman going in there murdering bad guys with guns. A lot of guns. And the guy that played Lex Luthor ended up, he didn't help, all right? I can't remember what his name is. But he was not a Lex Luthor-ish type person. They kind of made Lex Luthor this dorky, wimpy dude, when in reality, Lex Luthor was a guy that he was bodybuilding, he was building himself up physically to be the perfect human specimen. It's kind of weird because the last couple of years, Lex Luthor has been just... I mean, he's always been a bit of a bitch, but they have really made him into more of a whiner in the last couple of animated movies. I've kind of not liked it. I liked the version that was in, um, what was it, Superman the Animated Series? Because in that one, you know, Lex was an intelligent bad guy. He was in control, but he was a rat, okay? He was just, he was just basically a rat, and it also didn't help that the actor that was playing Lex Luthor went out there and insulted the fans really harshly. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Uh, your job is to act and, you know, to entertain. Entertain people. Don't don't shoot your mouth off about stupid stuff. But anyway. <sighs> Here we go. An original plan for, the two, for two Justice League movies was reduced down to one, and the shape of the DC Extended Universe... Warner's attempt at a Marvel Studios-style series of interconnected films grew foggier and less defined. Eventually, Snyder left the project in the wake of a personal tragedy. For those who don't know, I believe his daughter ended up committing suicide, which kind of plays into the next paragraph coming down here. Uh, so anyway, they replaced Snyder with Josh Winden the writer-director of The Avengers and its sequel, who had a few short months to do the unthinkable, fix a giant cruise ship with a busted hull that was quickly taken on water. Now, here's the here's the part that, that you can tell this person is just... I mean, it's, it's kind of like what Salty Cracker says at the end of his videos, the salt must flow. 
this this is just him, you know, the salt's flowing because he's really pissed off at the fans and he's just very angry. The movie was not a disaster. Okay? And it's very likely that Snyder would have gotten his two movie cut. Um, one person was saying that you had to, there was a couple of us talking online one time and one guy said, the only way you're going to get DC, uh, to do in our lifetime, what Marvel has been able to do is DC has got to come in there and it's got to establish a universe very quickly, very fast. Snyder apparently had a vision that would do that, but he required two movies to do it. Uh, the original Snyder cut was said to have Darkseid show up, which all we got was Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf, if you know anything about him, he's kind of like a lackey of Darkseid's. Darkseid is a main villain protagonist that you could have come in. And unlike Thanos, who gets his ass kicked in Infinity War, Apocalypse can just keep coming back. And if you've seen anything of the, um, what is it? The DC animated movies that they've come out with in the last couple of years. The Apocalypse War would be insane to watch. Um, especially if they turn that into a live action movie and stayed true to it. Um, but no, it wasn't, it wasn't a broken ship. They just kind of told them, you know, you gotta, you gotta get it down to about two minutes or two hours. We don't want to run, uh, two movies if possible. Snyder could have just simply run it a certain way, you know, directed a certain way to where it could be just kind of short up. But then if it made a whole bunch of money, they could then just in maybe like a theatrical and like a release later on, they could just add in a, a scene that would at the end of the credits, like, you know, dark sides coming in the next one. He's, he's fixing the land of the planet, but this idea of, Oh my God, you know, it's a giant unseen, <laughs> it's a giant cruise ship with a busted hole. It's quickly taken on water. Uh, that is just, okay. Uh, to put it like this, the, the, the floor is salt, the walls are salt, the, the ceiling is going to be salt, the air you breathe is going to be salt, okay? <laughs> it's going to be bad. All right, this, this guy is really angry because Collider here used to be where Warner Brothers put their finger to feel the pulse of the, the fans. And after, ever since 2016, cinema has relied on sites like this to get an idea of what fans want. And your boy, Zach, uh, government name, Richard C. Myers came out there and said, you know, they, they're running, um, what is it? Middleman ops where they've got sites like Collider running there as a middleman. And they'll, they'll, the fans will say something and then they'll run in there and they'll be like, oh yeah, uh, the fans are, are really misogynist or the fans are really, uh, homosexual or not homosexual. <laughs> that would be a good thing for an SJW. The, the fans are uh, homophobic or they're transphobic or something like that. And, uh, I've got an idea for a video I'm going to do later that kind of shows why we're in this position, why I think, and also why I agree with a lot of other YouTubers that the whole progressive nonsense is kind of going out the door. They're being kicked to the curb, and there's a reason for that. Uh, it has to do with three movies so far. All right, or yeah, it, uh, it's going to have it's going to deal with two movies. And if the Snyder Cut is really good, it's the Snyder Cut's going to be the third movie that kind of sets this kind of just sets it in my opinion. I'll explain that in a later video. Uh, right now, we're, we're not going to get through this if we don't hurry. Fans imagine that the rough cut of Justice League that Snyder submitted to the studio was better than the one that was released in theaters in November 2017. They shared the hashtag on Twitter, bought billboards in California and New York, flew planes with giant signs that said release the Snyder Cut trailing behind it. They even got corporations like Subway to contribute to the cause. Worst of all... <laughs> Here's here's more salt. Worst of all, they cloaked their activity, which grew into something of a public nuisance. Not really. It was more of a joke to normies, and it was highly serious to people. The only people that was it was a nuisance to were the people that did not want the Snyder Cut. That people like Collider here, who were trying to you know control a narrative, say these people were were horrible, bigoted, and all these people wanted was the better part of. They wanted what they believed was superior movie. Anyway. They regularly contributed, or they, uh, the, 
Ah, never mind. Let me restart that sentence. Worst of all, they cloaked their activity, which grew into something of a public nuisance under the shadow of charity. They regularly contributed to suicide prevention foundations, which on the outset seems noble, but really was a way of concealing what they were actually doing. Bullying everyone. Bullying everyone. Let me put this apparent let me put this right here. The same group of people who managed to get enough money to put billboards in California and New York and fly planes with giant signs and got subway involved and even got the original actors of the Justice League involved, um, somehow are bullying everybody. It's it's bullying, okay, to put a billboard up and fly a plane. No, it's not. This was fans. This was a collective of regular, average Joes and Janes who were fans of DC, who were fans of the Justice League, who... One member of the Justice League they could relate to that was their favorite character. And they all banded together and showed support. You can you have people do this. You have things like the pyramids of Giza rise up over the centuries, all right? You have a mass collective of people, and Warner Brothers was not bullied. They noticed this and thought, holy shit, look at all this money sitting out there. If we release the Snyder Cut. How much money can I think basically this entire time Warner Brothers has been sitting back listening to these sites, but then they've also been watching the stuff that's been going on on social media. And they're like, uh, what's it at now? There's there's hundreds of thousands of these people talking. Wow, if we release the Snyder Cut, how much money do you think we can make estimated by all these people on here? Oh, we we would make close to a billion dollars. It, it would be billions. I mean, that's what that's what they're looking at with HBO Max. I mean, getting billions of people on there. And then if they put HBO Max on there and they do a better job of marketing it and putting better content on there than what Disney Plus did. Disney Plus right now, about the only thing that's worth watching on it is all the Marvel movies, classic Disney stuff, and The Mandalorian, and classic Star Wars. That's it. Okay, a lot of the stuff they they suggest to me on uh, Disney Plus, they're like, "Would you like to watch the Rise of Skywalker?" No, hard no. <laughs> don't want to watch that. I've never seen it. I don't want to see it. My daughter asked me the other day. She's like, "Well, did they make any more Star Wars movies?" I said, "They made three more, and that was it." My wife's like, "You cannot lie to you." I said, "No." I am protecting my child. <laughs> One day she will see this and I'll be like, yes, there was a horrible. Hopefully by then we'll get a different trilogy. Hopefully we'll retcon that whole trilogy out of existence. Anyway, let's keep going about the bullying because the salt must flow. <laughs> just, I, I hate to steal that from Salty Cracker, but that's just what's going to have to happen here. Okay, just get ready. Get ready for that. Uh, Y'all going to need some water after this is over with. They bullied those who suggested that Maybe the Snyder version, which would require tens of millions of dollars to finish the audio and visuals, might actually be the worst version. <laughs> Who would want to watch a half-finished movie anyway? Those skeptics wondered. They bullied those... <laughs> Thought the theatric, the theatrically released version was good. Okay, here, 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 let me say something. Tens of millions of dollars is nothing compared to making a billion off of it. Okay? Um... Tens of millions of dollars is nothing. When you consider some movies nowadays pull about, have like a budget of about two hundred million. Uh, I can't remember which one it was. I want to say it was Birds of Prey or something. Had like a had over a hundred million dollars, and they they other. I the la, the rise of Skywalker had a massive budget, and it actually earned just barely over that. When comparing it to the other when comparing it to like the other Star Wars movies that came before it, they have budgets almost similar size and they were making way more. They were pulling up in the billions. Some were pulling like, like the, the force awakens pulled several billion. All right. It was a billion dollar box office hit and uh, Marvel cinema universe. All of them. If you look at their budgets, their budgets are not billions of dollars. They're in the millions. When you look at, you're taking tens of millions of dollars you're going to have to make a couple hundred million to hit a billion, okay? That's just basic math, all right? So it's worth it when Warner Brothers has probably looked at this, seen the fan outreach, realized how much they've got bean counters who are calculating 
based on posts. I guarantee you they've probably invested in an algorithm now to look at all the posts on this. They've been looking at how many tweets a day has been coming out with the Snyder Cut hashtag. How many people, how many different people are running it every day? And they got bean counters in there figuring out just how much money they could make if they could get all these people to buy the Snyder Cut just one time. They're like, and people may watch it twice if it's really good. You could double your money to some extent. It's worth it. You're talking billions of dollars if this gets done. Anyway, we keep going. But most of all, they bullied Warner Brothers. No, they did not. <laughs> they did not bully Warner Brothers who clearly went a completely different direction from what Snyder, Snyder was planning. According to the report in the New York Times, Wyndham wrote 80 new pages of material. Um, I'm not sure how long the script is, because a lot of those scripts are vaulted until a certain amount of time. But some scripts I've seen are well over two or 300 pages long. Okay, you're, you're talking several several hundred pages because of the format of script writing okay it's not like a book script writing is you know you've got you'll have a scene description of scene and then you'll have character says this and then this character says that like batman will say uh both my parents were killed wonder woman will say well all i have was a mom i didn't have a dad so i i halfway understand what it's like to lose a, a parent oh yeah it's, it's stupid stuff like that. then it would go to the next scene there's like spaces there's like a bunch of spaces and everything script writing is, is very different unless you look at um what is it the rambo script the rambo script is just <laughs> i tell you what you need to go find the rambo script and read it <laughs> it's like Wow, how did I make a movie? <laughs> how, did, how did we even make this movie to begin with? When you compare that script to the Rocky script, which are both, which both have Sylvester Stallone in it, and Sylvester Stallone did a lot of work on both movies, and you're like, "Damn, how did, how the hell did they make how the hell did they make Rambo?" Anyway, anyway, um, ah, I forgot where I was going. We're just gonna keep going. Fans in the industry began asking everyone involved with the film what they thought about the Snyder Cut, whether or not they thought it should be seen. One of the most vocal supporters of the move, movement on Twitter described by <laughs> described the move by Warner Brothers as sabotage, failing to acknowledge that if the version of the Snyder Cut of the version Snyder submitted was good, then Warner Brother then Warner's would have probably, you know, released it in the first place. Yeah. They probably they are now because they think it's going to make some money. As Snyder eventually began stoking the <laughs> yeah, Snyder was now bullying everyone. As Snyder began stoking the movement, so did several so did several stars of the film, including Ben Affleck, Jason Maboa, Henry Cavill, and Gal Gadot. And they're actually they're I mean Ben Affleck maybe he may have he may have changed down, but I mean I don't know. Henry Cavill seems like a great guy, and so does Gal Gadot. It seemed like a profound waste of everyone's time and further evidence that the only tool in this movement's arsenal was aggressive, unpleasant forcefulness. Well, no, okay? This is what happened. Snyder saw an opportunity to... I, I don't think he even considered making the Snyder Cut. He saw an opportunity commercially to probably push the narrative of it. And they probably Warner Brothers probably thought, you know, if we push this concept of the Snyder Cut it might entice more people to go in there and watch the movie, just see if they could find out where the movie uh, deviated from Snyder's vision. So, I mean, they probably got in there and said, you know, everybody needs to do this. We can probably get the movie up there, maybe recuperate some of our funds on the, on the uh, at home release. Some, some people have this idea that there's no such thing as bad press. There's only just press. So, you never know. But unpleasant forcefulness, no. It wasn't forceful. Uh, nobody was forced to do anything. Warner Brothers could have just kicked the fans to the curb. But they realized these were people that were you know, passionate about what was going on. They were starting to see it. Not to mention, you had Joker that came along, which was a DC property, I believe. And then you know, Joker's a DC property. And it was like, everyone said it was going to be a horrible movie. And it ended up surprising passing its budget retardedly low, to a retarded level. Okay, it was so nuts. And they were like, huh, that's one of the reasons why you guys are in this position right now to begin with where nobody's, where people are starting to stop listening to you because you kind of screwed yourselves on that. Anyway, the fact that Warner Brothers has not only acknowledged this incredibly obnoxious fan uproar, but also agreed to, per their demands, hashtag release the Snyder Cup is mystifying and potentially dangerous. 
I don't see how. The message is clear. If you bitch and moan enough, chances are the studio might not only hear you, but agree with you. The fan uproar, which was at the very least very annoying, and at the very worst, especially on Twitter, actively threatening has been vindicated. Okay, actively threatening and dangerous. Show me the receipts, okay? God. Oh, man, I'm going to need a gallon of water after all this freaking salt, man. Dear Lord. I need a Gatorade to go along with it. I'm going to have to have two gallons of water and a whole cooler of blue Gatorade just to deal with all this salt. <laughs> I swear, man, my mouth is getting drier just reading this crap. Their methods have been approved. What? Voicing your opinion? Exercising your First Amendment. Everything that they did had a purpose because Warner Brothers has finally given them what they want. Uh, no, Warner Brothers looked at, like I said, they looked at the situation, they seen an opportunity to make money. That's all this is, purely business decision. This is the problem with most of you people that are on these, uh, they're on these video sites, these, you know, fan sites and stuff right here. There's, you are a socialist, probably by nature. And the thing is, socialists hate money. But capitalists do not. So, screw you, man. We have seen the shadow of the of the hashtag release Snyder Cut movement rear its ugly head recently with the release of Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Fans convinced that J.J. Abrams had an original cut that was far superior to the one that Disney and Kathleen Kennedy released at theaters began whining to hashtag release the J.J. Cut. Um... This has to do a little bit of what Kathleen Kennedy's been doing behind the scenes, okay? She was not involved with The Mandalorian at all, and fans found out about that, and that's that's where this whole J.J. Abrams cut idea come from, okay? there's They, they believe there's a J.J. cut that's superior, but J.J. Abrams was probably stonewalled and stiff-armed by Kathleen Kennedy to put a specific cut in. But anyway, let's keep going. I've talked to several people involved with the film who said that it was a trial to get any cut ready for its December release. Well, one, they were going through one, they were going through multiple there was actually a rumor at one point that they were trying to build a modular script that they could put audience in front of. There was actually a point where they were doing test screenings and people got up and walked out. We're starting to walk out and they started telling them, look, you're not going to get your Disney promo stuff like gift cards and, and stuff like that. If you leave, you're going to have to stay. They had to threaten them with taking away their Disney gift cards for the Disney store. Okay. That's how bad one of these versions was. All right. And you can, and from what I've heard, I've never seen The Rise of Skywalker. I don't want to see The Rise of Skywalker. If a JJ cut comes out, I'll take a look at it. But the problem is you have that giant, whopping, festering zit of Ryan Johnson's bullshit of The Last Jedi sitting in the way of it that you have to build around. So I think there is a superior JJ cut. I would like to see J.J. Abrams just have done both the movies. I'm not saying they would be epic, but they would at least be a little bit better than what Ryan Johnson gave us. Round-headed little cunt. Anyway. Where was I? <laughs> I lost my freaking place. What the heck? Okay, anyway. Uh, who said that it was a trial to get any cut ready for Disney ready for this December release. So the idea that an entire separate version exists is laughable. Well, no, because from what we heard, there are multiple versions of the la of the rise of Skywalker. Just like any good conspiracy theory, the fact that it couldn't be true doesn't really matter. Well, no, a conspiracy theory has a monochrome of truth to it. It's just the interpretation of what that truth is. The facts are that there was a, a there were multiple cuts of the the rise of Skywalker, and we also know now that Kathleen Kennedy likes to get in the way of things, and she wants things done a certain way that is really, 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 really pro third wave, fourth, fifth wave feminist, if you want to call it. Um, Baby Yoda was not supposed to be Baby Yoda, according to if Kathleen Kennedy had her way, it would have been a little baby girl who was powerful with a baby human girl who was powerful with the Force. 
And uh, instead, they decided, Dave Filoni and um, them decided, you know, we'll make it a Yoda. And then, she, oh, she got mad. And then we all found out, hey, you know, uh, George Lucas is involved. Her old boss. So that's crazy. That, that's got to be good to get shown up by your old boss, you know, just having to sit there. Uh, hmm. <laughs> just, I just see that as some bad, bad time. The idea that Snyder or Abrams have told away in some unseen, told away on some unseen masterpiece is ultimately more comforting than the reality of the situation that they just made lousy movies. Um, no, because there's lots, they do it a lot. There's lots of director's cuts that come out that are just better. Some people, I feel like multiple, I think Clownfish TV said they have multiple versions of Blade Runner that came out. There's a lot, like the extended director's cut of Lord of the Rings is way better than what you see in there because there's a lot more history and more lore given in the extended director's cut and so everything kind of comes more in place if you've never, I, I there's lots, I, I know this because I actually have friends of mine who never read the books, came in there and were watching, they're like, oh, that's why, oh, that's why we're doing this, that's why they're heading over here to this one place. Um, there's just lots of things that are just, explained in very small snippets it's very small cut stuff but it it tells a whole lot more story um there there was actually um they actually uh, like just just to go off on a, on a rate on just a, a tangent here i gotta chase this rabbit real quick just give me a minute um they had a ver they had one where they actually talked about they they were showing one of the scenes they wanted to do but never actually filmed but they they kind of storyboarded it was turning the bal was having the Balrog turn into a mud Balrog. There was actually a part where you know when Gandalf and them hit the hit the water, that Gandalf comes out, and they're they were going to have the epic battle between Gandalf and this monster like play through the background of the sec of the second movie, the Two Towers, until Gandalf showed up after he killed the creature. And um, what would happen there was the Balrog would hit the water, turn into mud, and then come out. The mud would begin to harden. He'd almost freeze, but then he would break the mud off as it would harden up and turn into ceramic. He would be breaking it off, and his flames would come through. And I was like, God damn, that sounded like such a bitching idea. But it was one of the things they didn't have the money to do. So they just, they never even did any, there, there was no, there was no filming. There was no animation. There was nothing. It was just a storyboard. And you find that out in the extended version of the, you find that in all the background stuff in the extended version of Lord of the Rings. It's really cool stuff. Anyway, or, I mean, it's been done before. And a lot of times it makes the movie better because any added information to a movie sometimes will help. Uh, it, it'll help the background and everything, but let's keep going. This is going to be a long ass video. My God. Man, I swear I should drop a salt mine in this. I could probably make a million dollars. Anyway, for as long as the movement has raged, Warner Brothers has done the right thing and simply ignored them. That's the right thing to do? Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, let me see if I can get through this here because that, that kind of takes me off. The internet already has already gave them a voice when they shouldn't have had one. Dude. See, I haven't read this part yet. Yesterday, the studio gave them something they never expected but always craved. Legitimacy. Now we're screwed. Fans disple displeased by perceived slights will now be insufferable. Not only will they demand alternate versions of movies more often, but their rhetoric will affect the release of this and any other DC property. Ugh. If Warner Brothers thought that this would quiet them down, it won't. If anything, it amplifies amplifies their voices. The entitlement is already in. Okay, fuck you. Like I said, I work construction. Let me tell you how this works, because the entertainment industry is the same way. I provide a service. I fix your counters. I correct your foundation. I repair your roof. I put new pipes in for you. Whatever you need me to do. If we have to tear out a wall three freaking times to make the customer happy, then the only thing I'm worried about, the only thing that I'm entitled to is getting paid for my services. The person who's paying me, if they've got the money to tear the wall out nine freaking times, 
then we tear it out nine freaking times if they want to pay for nine different tear outs. The thing they've got to remember is I work two ways, by the hour or by the job. Either you're going to pay me nine separate paychecks or however many paychecks it takes for me to tear these walls out and put them back in. Okay? I don't get to sit there and tell them they're stupid. I don't get to sit there and tell them their opinion. It's not my house. It's not my job. It's their house. It's their job they need done. And I'm the freaking servant that's coming along to give it to them. The only difference is I get paid afterward. Same thing with your fans, all right? You have an opportunity here as a company to provide entertainment. That's all you've got. Whether the fan wants to give you money or not, that's their prerogative. So yeah, they have every single right to be freaking entitled about what they want to spend their money on because that's what they've gone in there put their hard-earned sweat blood and tears into to make that dadgum dollar so you've got to give them a very good reason for them to take that good dollar and spend it on your bullshit sit there and tell me that oh my god they're going to be entitled no you're entitled because you've been going around these last few years telling everyone that they're homophobic, they're sexist, they're anti-female, they're anti-woman, they're anti-gay, anti-trans, anti-this and anti-that and cis males and insulting people constantly only to be sit here and be pushed out because Sonic the Hedgehog and Joker proved you to be an absolute total fraud. I'm pissed off because I'm because my mouth is dry and I'm having to deal with all this salt you've been throwing out there, Drew Taylor. You're bullshit on here. That this is the thing, okay? The customer is always right. The problem is, like I said, you're a freaking socialist and you don't give a shit about money. But these companies need money to survive, and you created an environment and an entertainment famine. Where people are so tired, they're actually going out and trying to figure out how to make their own entertainment. And you are pissed off that people finally have come forward. It's an artificial famine you've created. And you're being kicked out of your position. And they're go and the company is going directly to the consumer. You have a direct line to the consumer nowadays. We don't need you anymore. And you've kind of screwed the pooch on this. You've screwed the pooch in thinking that you've got some kind of power to control all this nonsense. And you have the gall to call these people entitled after you've harassed them, after you've mislabeled them, after all this crap. And then you think that they're supposed to just take their money? I mean, my God, some of these people work two or three jobs to make ends meet, and they've got 20 or $30 left at the end of the week, and they're like, okay, you know what? My, my kid really wants to go see this movie. Well, we'll go see Trolls. We'll go see something, all right? That's what they, they're going to take their money and sacrifice something they could take and roll over into bills because their kids really want to go see it, and they want to go out and make a memory with their kids. It was all they've got the money to do right now because they ain't got a freaking Lamborghini. They don't have a freaking yacht. They live out there in probably government housing, working a job that by the time they get to be 60, their back's going to be busted up and paralyzed on their right leg because they're hurt, because they've herniated a disc somewhere because they about broke themselves in half for their own family. This is what happens when you get people who do communal living and communal bills, all right? They, they all live in the same dead gum tiny apartment and have no aspirations of anything better in life other than going around and pissing on people. God, there's more of this shit. You also have to feel for the creative talent involved in trying to fix Snyder's problem. No! You know what? No, I don't feel sorry for them. You know why? Because they're going to get a fucking paycheck before this is over with. They're going to get money. They actually get to go back to a property that they worked on and say, you know what, guys? Snyder's going to say, you know what? We're going to do it right, and y'all getting paid again to do it to do it right. We've done it wrong the first time. Now y'all get to do it right this time and get paid again. They're going to get money for this. They don't care. From Wendon to the countless artists and technicians who labor day and night to meet the release date. Who will still be fucking paid. It also won't be fun for Matt Reeves, director of the forthcoming The Batman, to be asked questions about this version of the character while he's working to establish his own take of the material. Really? <coughs> really? What? Why don't you ask him why James Patterson or whatever the 
fuck Edward's name is, wants to be a shiny version of Batman and not do a not lift a goddamn weight. I'll bet y'all think he's gro- he's glorious for doing that. Ugh. And it would be wise to remember that this is not a case of an artist having his paintbrush taken away from him midway through a complete masterpiece. From completing his masterpiece, Justice League is a corporate product. Are you joking? Justice League is a corporate product, one designed to sell Happy Meals and bed sheets and pave the way for additional quality, equally ambitious product. Oh my God! So. First, you're getting mad at the artists and technicians. <clears throat> you're saying how the first version was the best. And now all these people are getting paid. Warner Brothers season option. You're, you don't know, go right back to my original. You, you pretty much parrot my point earlier in the video, which is Warner Brothers saw the opportunity to make some money. All right? They saw a new option. They're like, dude, we could take what we had before, put about $10 million into this thing, and maybe walk away with a billion. We're going to walk away with $100 million no matter what. Okay? They're going to walk away with 10 times the profit. If it ends up being a joker, they're going to walk away with billions of dollars before it's over with. It's going to be retarded. <clears throat> on a property, it, it is a worthwhile investment. Just bring him back in, spend about $10 million on it, pay these people all over, do a couple fixes and tweaks, Boom. $100 million if it flops because people are going to go see it. Probably over a billion dollars and may start them a di- and may actually start them a DC Cinematic Universe maybe on the legs to be on probably another 10 years be what Marvel is today. And, and you, you go right to my point. That's why they did this. They weren't bullied. They did this because they wanted to sell Happy Meals. The first time, it didn't sell very good. But now they've seen that everybody wants to see this. At the very least, they'll make they'll make ten times their money out of it. And at the very at the very best, they're probably going to get way more out of this than they actually wanted. Ah. It's equally unambitious product. It's the same same asshole asshole retard nonsense of oh you know it's all fake anyway. It's all fake anyway. Your cannons, whatever. And, and it's it's not perfect. It's not ambitious or anything. It's it's just a freaking movie. It's just a freaking. Well, then why do you care? Don't watch it. Don't spend your money on it. Go somewhere else. Go in a corner and bitch in your little puddle of soy crap. Snyder agreed to provide something and didn't fall through. No, he had a family emergency, and there's no way they could have asked him to do that. This is a person sitting here. Drew Taylor is actually saying that Snyder is a failure because his daughter died. She had she had a problem. She had a mental problem. No telling what it was. I can't. I don't even know what it was. All I know is that she had a problem and she ended up committing suicide over it, which is a hard thing to go through. This is a this is an SJW NPC who is not humaning very well. God damn, we're saying, oh, you know, it's so bad what they're doing, but I have no care and concern about Snyder whatsoever. Snyder is who cares if Snyder's daughter died by suicide. This person is an absolute. Cool. Now Warner Brothers is going back on its commitment, and instead of, and instead it is just giving fans something. It's unclear if it'll even be a movie. It could be a mini series. I don't know if they'll do that or not. It probably is going to be a four-hour movie or a dual movie. Originally, it was supposed to be two movies. We're going to get half of a movie right now, which is probably going to segue into the dark side. And then we're going to get dark side Superman and all of them beating the crap out of each other. And it's going to be glorious, probably. And that's going to really... I hope it succeeds. That will just piss you off more. I just want to see you pissed off more. I can't wait for the, the next salty article you come in. I'm going to have a dadgum cooler of blue Gatorade for this nonsense to keep my mouth, to keep the salt washed down. Warner Brothers has been bullied worse. No, they have it. <laughs> Worst of all, not that their behavior regarding Snyder's dismissal, dismissal is, was at all admirable. So they're, they're they're a victim, but they're still a di- they're a victim, but they're still a bastard. Make up your mind. You you can tell the very end of this. This guy is losing his shit right now because he can't keep anything straight. And they have responded in kind. Here, just have it now. Leave me alone. <laughs> God, he's losing it. 
This guy is losing it. You you can you can read this. I'm gonna link this. So Y'all can read it and watch this dude lose his mind in real time. It is it is a man going mentally insane and having a mental breakdown in his own words. But bullies are never done. <laughs> They'll be back, and we'll all have to pay for it. <laughs> the bell is tolling, Batman. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I think I went nuts by reading this shit. <laughs> oh, God, this is good. Oh, man. Oh, this it's an entertaining article. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. It pisses you off. It makes you cry. It makes you just look at like what. It, it makes you cringe and it makes you laugh at the very end. It's really good. <laughs> I don't know. Are we gonna get a live action of this article? It would be nice. Just watching this dude just like lose his shit the whole time. But man, no, we're not gonna pay for it. Or, or, well, no, you know what? I'll say this. We are gonna pay for it. We're gonna pay for it with our own money, and we're gonna see if it was any good. All right. My, my thing right now, the Snyder Cut has a 50-50 shot of being good. Um, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, I think there's a lot of fan hype for it. I say it's 50-50 because the fans have hyped it so much, it's going to have to be just... It's going to have to be cinematic gold before uh, anything happens. And I'm I'm hoping that the Batman versus Batman v Superman was just, you know, kind of an enclave, you know, get, we're getting these three characters out of the way and then we're going to get into the right meaty stuff. But I mean, it's got, I'm, I'm not going to lie to people. The Snyder cut has a uphill battle going to it because the one thing I can tell you about these, about these people, they are going to come back there. But I mean, he is right. Bullies are never done. And Collider is a bully. They're going to bully Warner Brothers. They're going to harass them. Hopefully, Warner Brothers holds true because they've had success with Joker. And then, you know, you got Paramount also who had success with uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. I think, uh, and I said this before, it's not the SJWs you've got to beat. It's not the SJWs you have to convince. It's going to be the top dogs in the company that you're going to have to convince before this is before they start getting kicked out the door. You have got to start convincing them that they will make more money not listening to these people than they will actually listening to them. Okay? Um, as usual, folks, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment if you're new to the channel. Helps us out. And uh, it, it beefs me up and gets me more views. Share the video also. I know this was a long one, uh, but this is an article, and I haven't done one of these in a while. Anyway, <clears throat> stay safe, everybody. Uh, I guess I'm just going to say practice your social distancing uh, if you're still there. For those of y'all that are in lockdown, uh, if it gets real bad, we may boogaloo y'all out of there, all right? Anyway, I'm the last reader. Keep your head on a swivel. Stay frosty, folks, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.